Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For anyone who's new here, I'm Sophia and I love reading. I usually say reading romance books, but I feel like I I feel like I'm slowly starting to expand my taste. So we'll just settle with reading. But it is that time of the month once again where we have to pick my monthly TV. Uh, and I love choosing my TBRs with my TBR jar because I feel like it keeps things a little bit spicy, keeps things a little bit interesting, makes me revisit some books on my shelves that I may have forgotten about. Of course, if you do enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because I would absolutely love to have you here. I think for this month, I might switch things up a little bit. I usually choose eight books and then feel really upset with myself when I don't read the eight. So we're going to scale it back a little bit and we're going to make it a little bit more attainable and I think I'm going to choose six books. Books. Hopefully that means I'll be a little bit more likely to get to all of the six books and not be as decision fatigued. Anyway, let's get into choosing my first book. Okay, I want to dig like all the way to the bottom. I did put some new prompts in last month, so we'll see if we can get some new ones as well. What do we got? <laughs> okay, so our first prompt is treat yourself in brackets by a new book. So I actually got this prompt last month and I put it back because I didn't want to spend any money. But I feel like, you know, maybe this is a sign. My TBR jar just really, really wants me to buy a book. So I feel like we've got to do it. I could like write this off and excuse my new, my like treat myself purchase as daydream because I pre-ordered it. I haven't gotten like an email or something to tell me it's on its way, but I would have thought it was meant to be delivered in like the next day or two. So we'll see if she actually turns up. Let's open up my Amazon wish. First. The most recent addition to my Amazon wishlist is A Ship of Bones and Teeth by Karina Halley. I am currently reading A Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, which is like a pirate, dark pirate romance. And there is a video coming where I read it for you, but it's put me like straight back into my little pirate obsession. I'm currently rewatching the Pirates of the Caribbean movies to like accompany that vibe. But A Ship of Bones and Teeth I think is a pirate moment. Gothic dark fantasy pirate romance retelling of The Little Mermaid. Oh, is Miss Girl a mermaid? Hello. <laughs> Princess Marin is a woman with a secret. When she was 16, she sold her soul to the sea witch Adonia, giving up a life underwater in exchange for the love of Prince Eric on land. But after a decade of abuse and misery inflicted by the cruel prince, Marin wants nothing more than to leave him and her royal role behind and find Adonia to reverse the spell. An opportunity for escape it presents itself when the prince and princess are traveling overseas and are taken hostage by a band of notorious pirates led by the fearsome Captain, Ra <laughs> Captain, Captain Ramsey Bones. But she's star. Oh, the ship's haunted and crewed by the damned. This does sound interesting and it looks like there's a sequel. So I'd say it's a series. She has a 3.81 average star rating. What are my friends saying? Three star DNF. 4.75 star. We've got two more five stars. Okay. In one of my friend's reviews, she talks about the pacing being a little bit off and wanting some more angst. So I feel like I really want something with a bit more guts to it. Like I'm a little bit over all the like little TikTok rom-com kind of things that are coming out at the moment. I want a book with a bit more bit more substance than just a spicy little romance. Guys, I'm having a big dilemma right now. Oh my God. I'm having an identity crisis. Oh my God. Ruthless Creatures by JT Geisinger is $5,000. Can you see that? That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm I'm looking at my Goodreads want to read list. I've looked at my Amazon wish list. The only books that book that is tempting me is that Karina Halley book. I've heard very good things about her writing from people like Morta Mary. I think she loved the has it got like oranges in the title. I can picture the cover so clearly. I'll put it up if I can remember, if I can find it find what it is. I've heard really good things about her writing in this, and apparently this book is really good. Surely the theme just continues over into her pirate book, right? When was it published? 2023. So should be on par with that. It's like Orange Lust or something. I can't remember what it's called. Should be on par with that because of recent release. How many are in the series? What am I getting myself into? <gasps> Is it a duet? Oh no. Interconnected standalones. Okay. <laughs> it's like, how much am I committing myself right here? I think I'm going to get A Ship of Bones and Teeth by Karina Halley. And we're going to try and read it during the month of September. Okay, my order has been placed. A Ship of Bones and Teeth is coming home with me. My TBR jar told me to treat myself and I can't, I simply can't ignore her for a second month straight. So we're hopefully going to get to this book th this month. I am quite intrigued by it. And listen, I want to continue with my little pirate obsession. Yeah, let's now choose my second book. Oh, that one's like, hanging on. 
We have a book set in a different country. So this prompt really opens the doors for me for literally any single book on my bookshelf because I live in Australia, no books are set here. So my opportunities are quite endless. What do I feel like reading though is the question. I feel like I don't know what I want to read at the moment actually. I have a book set just down here which I bought the other day because one of you guys recommended it to me in the comments and I told you I was going to read it in a video. So I could choose this one and that is the only one left by Riley Sager. I know this is like a mystery, has some potentially horror elements towards the end I think. A heart pounding gothic thriller from the master of suspense. Everyone believes that Lenora Hope is a mass murderer. When the Hope family was massacred decades ago she was the only one left alive for that after that tragic night. Mute, paralyzed, and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora has never been able to tell her side of the story until her living caregiver, Kit, brings her a typewriter. And with one working finger, Lenora begins to type. I want to tell you everything. It's giving, and I haven't read this book, so I could be wrong, but it's giving the silent patient. This one does sound quite interesting. And I, I'm gonna assume it's not set in Australia. Like the chances of this being a, a, an Australian book is so slim. And I'm pretty sure Riley probably is an Australian. So he wouldn't think to set it here. A native of Pennsylvania, he now lives in Princeton, New Jersey. So I'd say this is not set in Australia. Should we do it? Look at me, a fantasy and a thriller on my TBR. Not a single ounce of romance. Well, a ship of bones and teeth is probably like a romantic but I'm turning a new leaf. I think I'm gonna put the only one left on my TBR. She sounds kind of fun to be perfectly honest. All right, book number three. I don't know how I managed to make these videos so long. I just can't shut up to be perfectly honest with you. A, that's exactly what I don't want actually. <laughs> this prompt says to pick a viral book talk book. I feel like I can't, I'm, I'm not really keeping up with book talk anymore, but does Daydream by Hannah Grace count? Because Icebreaker is the OG viral book talk book. Eh? <laughs> Let's have a look at what else is on my TBR. We could do When the Moon Hatched. We could do Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. I feel like that one could have a little bit of like extra, not extra, but like a little bit more of a complex plot to it, maybe? Fucking around by Emily Roth, anybody? <laughs> oh my god. To be fair, this could be a fun one to read, like, when I don't want something thought provoking. <laughs> like, it could be a fun one to read in between a fantasy and, like, a thriller and just, like, read a couple of chapters here and there. I don't mind that idea, actually. <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of saying that just to justify potentially choosing it, but I don't hate that idea. It's just such a big book though. It's like 700 pages of hockey spice. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Is Collide by Belle Carver a viral book talk book? I really want to choose Wildfire, you guys. And Henry's book. That one's bound to become a viral book talk book. I'm going to choose Daydream. Did I say Wildfire? I'm going to choose Daydream by Hannah Grace. Icebreaker is the OG book, viral book talk book. Wildfire, I feel like, had its moment. And everyone is so hyped for Henry's book. So it's bound to gain quite a bit of traction on TikTok. So I think I want to choose Daydream by Hannah Grace. I don't have it in my possession just yet, but it comes out tomorrow, I think. The postie better have it on my doorstep. If not, I'm not gonna do anything, but I want it on my doorstep tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, really excited to read this one. I think it's potentially like a tutor, tutor student kind of moment. Like he goes to her for some tutoring and they like strike up a relationship. Yeah, I really don't actually know much about this book other than the fact that it's Henry's. Let's actually have a look. Henry and a fellow student come up with a plan to help them both overcome their respective challenges in a difficult year when his procrastination lands him in a difficult class with his least favorite professor. Why can't I talk today? Professor Henry Turner knows he's going to have to work extra hard to survive his junior year of college. And now with his new title of captain of the hockey team, which he didn't even want. Henry absolutely cannot fail. Enter Hallie Jacobs. That's a really cute name. A fellow junior who finds herself befriended by Henry when he accidentally crashes her book club. Are we about to have a moment where the book boyfriend reads her books and the spicy scenes in those said books? Because look, I'm not gonna complain. I do see it done a lot these days, but I'm not gonna complain, you know? Uh, Hallie may not have the romantic pursuits of her favorite fictional leads, but she's an academic superstar. And as soon as she hears about Henry's problem, 
problems with his class reading material she offers to help. Too bad being a private tutor isn't exactly ideal given her own studies, job, book club and the novel she's trying to write. But new experiences are the key to beating her writer's block and Henry's promising to be the one to give them to her. They just need to stick to their rule book. Oh, and not fall in love. Look, it sounds like every other rom-com that I've read. <laughs> sounds like every other single private tutor book girl kind of romance that I've read, but am I gonna read it regardless and probably eat it up? Yeah, so I'm gonna stick Daydream by Hannah Grace on my TBR. Okay, book number four. This one feels like it's gonna be a big prompt. Maybe, maybe not. <gasps> Ooh, a book written by multiple authors. I've not seen this prompt in a hot minute, so I'm very happy that we're getting some older prompts coming through. But what are our options? We have Christina Lauren, we have Be Krista and Becca Ritchie. <laughs> Those might be our only options, actually. Okay, I think that's the extent of the options that at least I'm aware of. So I think I'm gonna go with Krista and Becca Ritchie and I'm gonna read Ricochet, which is the second book to Addicted to You. I read Addicted to You a couple months ago and I actually, slightly unpopular opinion, quite enjoyed it. I really love the writing style. I wasn't like obsessed with Lily or Lo, but I kind of liked their toxicity. Like as awful of me as that is to say, I enjoyed the toxic like plot line to it. And I also love the fan family and just the like huge cast of characters. So I think I'm gonna loop back around and read Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This one I believe is at least like the first step of Lily and Lo recovering because they, Lily's a sex addict and Lo is an alcoholic. Like the first book follows them and basically enabling each other and really struggling with it with their addictions and sort of like grappling with how to reach out for help and Ricochet I believe is the book where they finally get that help when they finally start to recover and rebuild relationships with their families and their friends so yeah I'm really really intrigued to read this one pretty sure this one's on Kindle Unlimited so that is fantastic because I don't have the paperback but I'm really excited to continue on with the Addicted series okay book number Five. Pucking around is just like staring at me from my bed and it's, ugh, I don't want to read you right now, babe. Stop looking at me. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, that's only one. Uh, oh, this is another one of my new ones. Okay, this one is a book closest to 300 pages. I feel like the only correct place to start is with one of my Ashley Monos books because I loved, love, love, loved where we started. It's 285 pages. I know I can get closer. Okay, maybe we try Swift and Saddled. Immediately, we're already closer. What have we got? Oh, no, it's 285 pages once again. Okay, don't read the words. But we have Swift and Saddled at 285 pages. Then we also have Where We Promised by Ashley Muddles. Oh, this is the third book. Book two, she feels a bit thicker. Come through, no. She's 283 pages. Oh, I could cry. So unfortunately, Ashley Monos is out of the race. What books really aren't close to 300 pages anymore? All right, Cheering the Player by Rebecca Jenchak. Once again, we have 283 pages. I don't think Steel King by Daphne Perry is gonna be, I think it's gonna be too many. Yeah, that's like 370 something pages. What have I got over there? I feel like all the books over there are too long. <gasps> I've thought of a book that I could do a video with. The book? I'm grabbing is Mayfly by CJ Lead, and we're gonna stay here in case I have to put it back. We have 294 pages. Do we settle with Mayfly or do we keep looking? I feel like we settle with Mayfly. Or we have North of the Stars by Monica James, since I love Defeating to Blood, which I swear I've mentioned in the past 10 videos. Since I love that book, it's about Vikings and like in a fantasy setting. This one's about Vikings as well, but in a more realistic. It's too long, never mind. <laughs> I think Mayfly is the closest we can get, and I'm not mad at that. So, this one is a, I think it's a take on American Psycho, but it's got a female heroine. And I don't know a whole lot about American Psycho, but I'm pretty sure Maeve, she works as a child's ice princess. So she does like children's parties and things. But in the dark of the night, Maeve haunts the dive bars with a drink in one hand and a book in the other, imitating her misanthropic literary heroes. But when her best friend's brother, Hello, do we have a romance subplot? Moves to town, he awakens something dangerous in her and the world she knows suddenly shifts beneath her feet. Untethered, Maeve ditches her disconnected act and tries on a new persona, a bolder, bloodier one. Inspired by the pages of American Psycho, step aside, Patrick Bateman, it's Maeve's turn. This one's been on my TBR a few times before, but I have a really fun video idea that I think I wanna include this one in and what more reason do I need to pick this book? It's very intriguing to me. I believe it's horror. 
do with that what you will i've never read a horror book before but i do think i like reading about gore and i mean i like a dark romance so i'm not a stranger to some darker tones in books shall we say so i think i'm gonna give mayfly a go this has me like really invigorated and excited to start this video so i think i'm gonna pick mayfly by cj lead okay and our final book i feel like i'm being so brave with this month's tbr it's incredible but do kind of want to choose a cute little hockey romance or something not the daydream isn't a cute little hockey romance but praying to like all of the tbr goals right now oh that one's like <laughs> calling it on okay let's have a look why am i struggling so hard to open this come on <gasps> okay this prompt it's not quite what i wanted but it still gives me what i want so <laughs> this prompt says an author whose first or last name it starts with the letter m so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be picking up where we belong by ashley munoz this is as i said the second book in that series it is an interconnected standalone and this one follows our heroine from the first book's best friend who came to town just to support her bestie going through like her father's death and grieving so this was about the bestie and in the first book it was kind of alluded to that miss bestie had a bit of a thing with the like second in command so this is gonna be their book i'm assuming it's gonna be a little bit of a like time jump potentially from like where they first meet to where they like meet again I guess but yeah I am really really excited to read this one what's the <gasps> they're roommates and they were roommates they call him the wolf his club his brothers and even my best friend Callie I didn't really care what they called him not when the only name I had ever called him was coward period girl go off oh my god because three months ago he snuck under my resilient heart like the thief he is and stole it oh and then he broke it going home wasn't an option not when i promised callie i'd stay she swore i'd eventually feel like i belonged in this small town the club ensured i had a job and a place to live which reluctantly earned my loyalty until i discovered their little caveat the apartment technically belonged to the new president i was welcome to stay as long as i understood it meant sharing and my new roommate, the very man who turned avoidance into an Olympic sport, the wolf. Look, I don't love his like alias <laughs> name. Not a big fan of like the wolf, but I think I'd put this one on the TBR. I really love the first book. I'm very intrigued by this one. They're just like very simple but entertaining books and they're written quite well. Like I really enjoyed the writing in the first in this series. So I'm intrigued to see where it goes in the second one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna chuck this one on the TBR. This will be a little cute, silly, goofy read. And I hope I have some fun with it. And with that, as we are only choosing six books, we have come to the end of this video. We're going to do a quick little recap on all of the books that I'm going to be picking up in this month. And let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these books, if you're looking forward to seeing me read any of them, if you're going to take a wild guess at potentially what this video is going to be about. And yeah, the first prompt that I have to recap you with is an author whose first or last name starts with M. We're going to be reading Where We Belong by Ashley Manolas for a book closest to 300 pages we're going to be picking up mayfly by cj lead for the prompt of a book set in a different country i'm going to be picking up the only one left by riley sager for a book written by multiple authors i'm going to pick up ricochet by krista and becca ritchie for a viral book talk book i'm going to be picking up daydream by hannah grace and finally for treat yourself aka buy a new book i am going to be picking up a ship of bone and teeth I want to say by Karina Halley and there we have my entire TBR for the month of September I'm really proud of myself I feel like I'm pushing my comfort zone a little bit and I'm just like very happy how good do these how good do they all look together by the way kind of fun kind of not giving cutesy little rom-com who am I? I had a really, really good time filming today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed as well. And yeah, as I said earlier, let me know down below if you've read any of these books because I would love to hear your thoughts, your opinions without any spoilers. And thank you so much once again for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because I would love to have you here. My Instagram and Goodreads are always linked in the description if you want to check them out. If you want to keep watching some more of my videos, you'll find them down there as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching once again for like the third, maybe fourth time. And I will hopefully see you in my next one. Bye.